ones, the oldest house in Bath. 1482. And I think the restaurant was started in 1680. Really, really cute. Sally Lund's bun is what it's known for. So you can already see it's really quaint. I'm guessing that's Miss Sally Lund herself. Sally can cook a bit. Yeah. So we'll see how this goes. Looks pretty quaint. So we're eating at Sally Lund's and a lot of tour groups are coming by and taking pictures like through the window because it's a famous restaurant, like it's the oldest. I told Kurt, I should have gotten this on camera but everyone's looking through their cameras and I felt famous. <laughs> Obviously not, but it's just funny. Like hordes of people will come by and they'll point their camera through the window and we're right here at the front, so it's just kind of funny. Anyway, this is Sally Lund. And there's like a little fireplace and crit of arms and fireplace. Yep. We're excited about our buns. <laughs> what kind of tea did you get? Yeah. We didn't get tea the other day, so Kurt got some instead. Alrighty. Ready to eat. My club on a bun. Classic style on bun. And what did you get? Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon and soup for the day. Soup yeah. Hey, okay. Sally Lund bun. Here we go. Well, obviously, I enjoyed my Sally Lund bun. Nothing is left. And I think I'm about to get a dessert one that has cinnamon butter on it. How was yours? Very good. Yeah. It's, real, it's still really funny. People are coming up. <laughs> we enjoyed it. Dessert is coming. Okay, here's my dessert. It's a Sally Lund bun with cinnamon butter. I'm really excited about it. What's yours? Apple cake. And it has clotted cream, I think, with it. It's very English. <laughs> Looks like butter. Yeah, uh-huh. Looks just like butter. <laughs> okay, we're gonna enjoy our dessert. This is the downstairs little museum part. And look, it says this space is said to have been used to lock up bakery boys who cause trouble. <laughs> Here's Sally. And this shows the original kind of baking area. Really, really cool. Up the stairs we go. To watch your head. Oh boy. Out we go. Excuse me. Here's the outside. It was so yummy. Sally Lynn's. So we're in Bath Abbey, the church in Bath, one of the major churches in Bath. And um, we were reading the pamphlet they give out and um, it's actually really evangelistic um, just in how they talk about Jesus' life and who he was and is. And um, they focus on a relationship with the living Lord. And that's extremely rare. Um, we've noticed. Um, but this is also interesting. They're experimenting with this stage, uh, having their speaker and I guess maybe the readers for the service on this stage, which puts them closer to the people actually in the congregation. Because in the past, or typically in a cathedral, like there are, you know, a short big church like this, 
you have to go through the choir and then all the way back there is your speaker. So it's just interesting because, whoops, they're wanting to bring it closer to the people that are actually worshiping. Just interesting to um, observe. And I have a really cool story about the church life here that I'll tell later, but um, I'm, I'm really impressed with their goals of focusing on evangelism and just bringing everything down to, what's the word, just a less, um, or it's just more congregation friendly, I guess less intimidating. I think that's the phrase I'm looking for. Just a less intimidating experience when people come to church here. Really, really cool. This beautiful, almost like Bo Peep, because um, this has straps, so she brought that fashion in. Little motifs, we're not seeing the heavy embroidery, we've got ribbons on the dress, we're seeing pastels coming in. And I say a Bo Peep because she would have had a crook with something like this and a flock of sheep. Okay, now that's very nice and all very good, but in the 1790s that was dangerous because the majority of the French population at the time was starving, hungry. They lived off the land, they tended to their sheep. They were actually, we are now formally coming into the Regency style. Um, this is a reaction to two things this is a reaction to the French Revolution in. Um, uh, the British aristocracy, they knew what was going on in France in the 1790s and they got scared and literally overnight they changed their fashion to no longer look like aristocracy, to show that they were wealthy and rich through their clothes. They didn't want again the heavy embroidery and they sh wanted this long leaner look because of archaeology. This is our dinner restaurant and we had earlier reservations so it hasn't filled up at all yet so it's been really cool because We've had it basically all to ourselves. It's called La Perla, La Perla, and um, it's Spanish tapas. So we're almost done eating, but we had several um, small plates. It was delicious. It's down this like really steep set of stairs, and it's kind of a hidden restaurant. So it's really cool. Five stars for sure. So we're gonna go kill a little bit of time before our train back to London. Was it good? Very good. That's what snapper? Snapper. And fries. Yeah, snapper. I should have showed you everything else I got, but. Small plates. It was really good. So we will check in later once we're back on, I guess, headed home. Bye. Okay, so this is coming out of the restaurant. And you go up these stairs. And there's like a. I don't know if you can tell, but that's kind of the courtyard area down there. Really cool. Okay, where to? Um, Do you want to go at that bridge? We we're going to try to look at the Pultony, I think it's called Pultony Bridge. It's like really picturesque, so we'll try to find it. Be right back. There's Pultony Bridge. Very picturesque. There's a park over in there, but it's closed now, I believe. Isn't that pretty? So we're just kind of Killing some time after dinner before our train back. There's another view of the Abbey. Do you just kind of want to wander towards the center of town, I guess? Might as well check out the bridge. Yeah, I guess we go to the bridge. So it's been a really good low key day in Bath. I'm really glad I got more time. You just can't see everything in that short amount of time. So we're gonna go check out the bridge.
Here we go. We'll get a little closer. Gives you kind of an idea. We've noticed that literally everything shuts down, so you're kind of left to wander. And I could have gotten an earlier train back, but you just never know. You know how it's going to go, and I didn't want us to be rushed. So, here's the bridge, I guess. I don't know if you can... Uh, well, I guess it's just inside, or like the little shops inside. So yeah, this is the bridge, basically, but there's businesses inside. So yeah, it's not like a bridge that you can actually walk through, I should say. It's just different businesses. Anywho, okay. We'll just keep exploring. Love Bath. It's a definite must do if you can do a day trip. Okay, so we came on the under part of the bridge. We found a little walkway and we're gonna see if we can do this maze. Okay. Okay, it's about to happen. We are about to finish the maze. I just about quit because I was getting bored. But I stuck with it. Nuh-uh, you, you, you go up to the thing. That's the whole point. <laughs> what? what? I made it, people. You, t you tell a story behind the face. This is one of the prominent faces uh, on the Roman bath. He's a, uh, one of the gods, one of the Greek gods. But they didn't really know, didn't really fit a description of a Greek god that we know because he's a man with snakes in his hair, which doesn't yeah. really fit. But it was one of the most significant finds in the Roman bath when they dug it up. And they say that like the way that his hair is like splayed out, it's kind of like if you were to lay down in a swimming pool and your hair kind of like fans out. Remember that? Yeah. So I think that's where that came from. Like he was laying down in the pool. I don't know. What? Oh, you did Huh? Are we in the video? Yes, we're videoing. Where are we going? Uh, we're just uh, making our way back to the uh, bus station. Because Train station. This whole town except the restaurants closes around 6 o'clock. Yeah. I don't think they really intend for people to stay. <laughs> so, kind, of. kind of gives you an under kind of view. Okay, so we're gonna make our way back through Bath. Try to get back to our train. Ooh, that's a pretty view. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. That's see you later. We were in earlier. Oh yeah, that's the. I'm really bad at aiming this. I was turned the wrong way. Okay. See you on the train. Hey guys, so we're back at our hotel after our train ride back from Bath, and it's pretty late. Um, it's a little after 11, um, so we're just kind of getting um, like pajamas on. I just called the kids, and um, it was such a good day. It was a really like low key, really not that fast paced for us, and it was. I, I love the environment of Bath. It's just gorgeous, and um, but I. The biggest thing that I wanted to share with you guys, and I wanted to wait until we were back at the room, um, just for even our memory's sake, I wanted to share this. But 
the, this morning we stopped in a like restaurant for breakfast because we got there about 30 minutes before everything kind of opened um, attraction wise and so we stopped in a little breakfast place for to eat something and we've been there a little bit and these two men Englishmen in their 70s um, they came and they seated them like right kind of next to us like inches away from us and it was funny because out of the whole restaurant you know the restaurant was empty but they just set them next to us and the next thing we knew, we, we heard them start really talking about what seemed to be spiritual things. And we couldn't really catch it all. But then we, we heard more clearly they were talking about their churches and ministries that were going on in their churches. And they were clearly like either local or, you know, definitely they were English. And um, they just started talking about so many different things. And one of the men was talking about how his pastor was going to start a, a sermon series on vision. And me and Kurt were just like, oh my word, like they're, are they, they're believers. And um, then the next thing we knew, they bowed their heads when their food came out and they started and they blessed their meal. And the man that was praying was saying things like, you know, thank you, Father, for our salvation. Thank you for our churches. Thank you. I mean, just so very much like an evangelical, if that makes sense, kind of prayer. Just very personal to the Lord and very relational. And um, when they went, I looked at Kurt and I said, we've got to say something to them. And he was like, yeah, we, we really do. And so we finished and we just walked over to their table and we introduced ourselves and we said we couldn't help overhearing but we we heard that you, you know you're christians and um we told them we're very active in our church at home and my dad you know is, is our pastor and they were so glad we said hello and one of the men said you know there's not i said you just sounded so you know excuse me so evangelical um in in belief and tradition and very personal and and he said, you know, there's not, he said, there are still some of us left here. And it just, I don't know, it was so overwhelming. And he said, you know, we have a really, we have a good, strong evangelical community really here in Bath, which surprised me too. And um, we just shared back and forth a few minutes, just encouraging each other. And um, just what a cool thing it is to meet fellow believers, just literally all over the world. And and so we, you know, said, we'll, we'll be praying for y'all and your churches. And we're so happy to hear that, um, the Lord is, is so, he is very much here, you know, through y'all. And, and he's, and one of the men said, please let me pray. Can I pray for you before you go? And we walked over and no, no, I'm sorry. He said, come here a minute. And so me and Kurt walked over kind of where he was sitting and he held out his hands and he said, I'm going to bless you and pray for you. And then, so we, we bow our head and we close our eyes and he starts praying over us and blessing us in, in Hebrew. And I mean, to the point that I was almost overcome in tears. And um, he finished, you know, the whole, the whole prayer was in Hebrew. And then he finished that with the traditional prayer, the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you. Um, but at the very end, he said, and usually you say, and give you peace. And, and this man said, and give you shalom. And I thought I was going to just be raptured right there. It was the most powerful and ex just amazing experience to be with these two men. And just to have that, um, that common bond of just loving the Lord. And um, the fact, and so we, we believe that we didn't really go into detail and ask him, but we obviously think that he is a Jewish Christian, um, or he had at least extensively studied Hebrew enough to, to bless us in that way. And, um, I told Kurt, like I walked away cause we, Kurt and I had said this whole trip, you know, we love London so much. I mean, especially, I mean, I just, I love it. You, you guys know that, but there's definitely a spiritual weight and a heaviness here. And we've had lots of different conversations with people throughout our trip, very subtly. I mean, it just kind of comes up uh, somehow, but um, just the spiritual climate here is is difficult. And, um, you know, you have all these magnificent cathedrals and churches, and they're empty. And um, people just, generally speaking, I, was, and I don't want to make a blanket statement at all, but generally speaking, I think that it's just viewed as, you know, the state church, state religion. You know, you may come just to be a part of that if you even go. And 
you know, Kurt and I have had a heaviness this trip, just really burdened for just these people and um, for them to just know the um, the joy of walking personally with the Lord. And um, it was just an amazing experience. It was like the Lord reminded us through this moment, this morning, I'm still here. And there are people who love me and serve me and worship me with their hearts and their lives here. And it may not seem as obvious, but they're here. Just like there are Christians all over the world. And um, man, I just, I cannot even tell you just how meaningful it was. And I told Kurt, I said, that is the trip for me. That was the most incredible part of this trip for me was connecting with, with those two men. And I, I really mean that when I say that it's been an incredible trip and you know, tomorrow's our last day and we're doing some last minute things that we've wanted to do. And then we're headed home on Thursday. And I just could not think of a better way to end this trip than by having a brief, even if it, it was brief, but it was so meaningful with these two gentlemen. And, um, we didn't even get their names or, you know, where they go to, they, they, they live in Bath. Um, and they go to two different churches, but um, we didn't even get their name. It was just, it was a very brief encounter, but the Lord just really spoke loudly to me in that moment. And, um, it was just amazing. So that was our day. And of course, when your day starts off like that, it was just like, oh, I, I could not stop thinking about them and the whole day. And, um, so we'll definitely keep them in our prayers and the Lord knows who we're praying for. And I can't wait to one day be with them in eternity. Um, and so anyway, it was just a great day and we love Bath and we're back at our room now and my, I put on a new scope patch from motion sickness. So that's why my, my voice is so hoarse. It clears me out or dries me out. But, um, anyway, we're going to sign off and go to bed and we get to sleep a little bit later in the morning cause we're going to go to tower of London that we missed at the very beginning. So we'll try that tomorrow and just do some last minute things. So I will check in later. Bye guys.